Welcome. This is Clutter Corner Live, and I'm super excited that you've joined me today. I have a true confession. I got up this morning and I went downstairs to my kitchen and lo and behold, there was this box. This is a really nice box. It's really heavy duty. It's very durable. And I thought, well, that's a peculiar looking box. I, I wonder what that's for. So my husband comes down to get ready for work. And I said, hey, what is this box for? I mean, it's very, very nice. And he said, well, I bought a scarf and it came in this box. And I said, well, I'm really curious. Why did you keep the box? And he said, I kept the box because it's a once in a lifetime box. <laughs> what, what is a once in a lifetime box? What does that even mean? And I said, what are you going to do with it? And he said, I don't know, but it's a once in a lifetime box. I've never seen a box like this and I may never see one again. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. And as I look at it and it's very durable and it's, it's got like this clear cover, you could put, I don't know, something fancy inside. But here we have this box and absolutely no use. Now, this is the topic of today's conversation. Why are you hanging on to stuff that you can't throw away and you maybe even don't know why? All right. Well, one of the things that I came to the conclusion was it is a good box and I kind of like it myself, but I gave my husband the caveat. I said, will you do me the courtesy of if you haven't done something creative with it in 30 days that you'll get rid of it? And he said, yes. So what this box represents to him is creativity. He's going to come up with something super creative in the next 30 days that he's going to use this box for, right? And I'm curious to see what it's going to be. Now, uh, I would love for you guys to jump up here and join me today. We've got lots of fun things that we're going to discuss, but mostly what we're going to discuss today are conversations that have come in from the book that we're having called Clutter Corner. It's uh, not Clutter Corner. I'm sorry. It's called Hoarding World Advice from a Friend. And the reason that we've asked people to share their stories with us is because by listening to other people's stories, it puts us in touch with our own reasons why, why we're hanging on to stuff and what does it mean to us? Because if we knew the answers, maybe we would find the, or, or if we knew what the questions were, maybe we would find the answers, right? So this is some of the stuff that we're looking at today. And before we begin, I do want to express the, the idea that this is a YouTube channel and this is for informational entertainment purposes only. We are not licensed therapists. We're, we're none of those things. And so if you need additional help beyond what this show provides you, I want to request that you talk to a friend, talk to a family member, talk to someone from the church, talk to a therapist or whoever it is in your life that can help you get from here to there. The purpose of this show is just to have some of those really tough questions about you know, why are we hanging on to things like a really super cool empty box, right? Because we've, we've already talked in our household lots of times about the boxes. We're not going to keep the empty boxes, but this one was a once in a lifetime box, right? So that's, that's the, the reasoning for that. All right. Now I do want to say that as we're beginning this, we're moving all of our uh, hoarding and decluttering shows from our cleaning channel on YouTube over to Hoarding World. And so we're trying to separate them for various reasons. But the main reason is we're able to serve the, the YouTube channel that's only designated for the hoarding, the, the hoarding, ha, I made that word up, hoarding and decluttering in a better way than mixing it with all of our cleaning stuff. So both channels still exist and I'm active on both channels, but we're really concentrating and focusing on all of our energy on the Hoarding World channel. So if you're not already a member, join us over there and subscribe so that you can, you can participate. All right. I'm super excited that you are here today. And uh, I do want to, I want to talk about why people have special occasion dresses inside their closet after 30 years. This is kind of a tough a tough, uh, I don't know, something to get rid of. And we asked lots of people as we cleaned their closets out, we said, Hey, these are beautiful dresses. Can you share with me your thoughts and your reasonings why they're still here? And what's interesting to us is that many times the homeowner was hanging on to dresses for their own reasons. And the reasons were not all the same. Now, what I'm about to share with you today are not the solutions as much as the questions, because these are questions that I want you to ask yourself. Like, oh, wait a second. I did that for the same reason. 
And then that helps us dive a little bit deeper and then maybe have a conversation with our children, with our spouses, with our friends, and maybe even a support group like the Hoarding World group that we have on Facebook, where we get together and we have these conversations to help us change our relationship with stuff. So if you have hoarding tendencies, or if you identify as a hoarder, or if you have a family member that's a hoarder, or even if you're just a, a super big clutter bug, this might be a chance to stop and just say, wait a second, I've been doing something a certain way my whole life and I never really paid attention why. And now that I'm aware, I have choices, right? So this dress is from a wedding and she says it was a memento, a, a memento of the fortune that she spent on the wedding. So this is a woman who spent an entire fortune on her daughter's wedding. And as she got ready to go to the wedding, of course, there were bills to pay and she was going to finance it for years and it was a really expensive deal. And hanging onto the dress, every time she opened her closet, it reminded her that this is what I spent my money on. This is where my money went. This was this was how I invested it. And so that was a really great chance for her to be reminded every time she opened her closet. And that's the reason she hung onto her dress. The next one was kind of sad. And they said, I hung onto it because I was important enough to someone that they had me be a bridesmaid in their in their life. And this was an interesting story because I asked, and where is your friend now? Because if you were that important in someone's life, where are they now? Are they still an active part of your life? And she said, no, it was my friend, Kathy. And I said, where is Kathy? And this is really interesting. This was a woman whose who's home we cleaned and we were trying to get rid of a dress that had been there for 30 or 40 years. And she said, um, well, she's coming over. We're, we're going to watch movies and, you know, we're going to get together one of these days. And I said, but where is Kathy now? And she, she didn't understand the question. And I said, have you reached out to Kathy? Well, no, I'm waiting for her to call me. Wait a, wait a minute. You're waiting for her to call you, but she might be waiting for you to, for you to call her, right? If she lives nearby, why don't you call Kathy and make that lunch appointment or make the dinner appointment? If this person was so important to you that you were the maid of honor and you got a dress in your closet, why don't you pick up the phone and call Kathy? So the next time we come to our house, I said, hey, how did it go with you and Kathy? She said, oh my goodness, I'm so sad. Kathy passed away a couple of years ago. Now she's been spending all this time hanging on to something in her closet because she meant something to someone. And instead of keeping those relationships alive, she let the dress just sit in the closet while the relationship kind of died off as well as did Kathy. Now, the reason I bring this up is not to break your heart because it was really heartbreaking for me to have this conversation with her. What I want you to be aware of, though, is no, Kathy's not coming for any of us. There's no Kathy that's coming. Nobody's going to pick up the phone and call you and say, hey, let's go to lunch. It's your job to pick up the phone and call them and say, Kathy, I haven't heard from you in a while. Where are you? How are you? Let's go to lunch. It's your job to make the initiation. All of us are capable of doing that. We all have texts. We all have emails. We all have phones. We all have, I don't know, WhatsApp or whatever, whatever it is, how we get in touch with people. And so if we're waiting for somebody to come to us and make a connection, that somebody that was important enough to us, that you were the bridesmaid at their wedding, or they're the godparent of your child, or they are your godchildren, get on the phone and call those people, right? You don't want to be the person that wakes up one day and says, Kathy is no longer with us. How sad is that? And now all she had was the dress to remind her. All right. We have another one that says, I wore the dress and it transformed me into a beautiful person. This is really sad. Um, that's a beautiful dress. And there are lots of beautiful dresses that we have in our closets. Maybe they fit us at a certain time and it looked like the best version of ourselves. But the reality is we're beautiful now. And so what are you wearing right now that represents the best version of you? And the reason I bring this up is because there are times that we hang on to stuff because it creates the illusion of who we are actually in our minds. Who are we? Well, I'm that beautiful woman with the long hair and I wore that really sexy dress or whatever. That's not us anymore. The version of us has changed. We're never going back to those days. So how are you being the beautiful version of you today? And it's going to look different because, I mean, lo and behold, time changes people and styles change. And even if you were to go back into that dress, it's probably out of date or out of style and you probably would want a new one, right? So is there a possibility you could get rid of something? Just a question I'm asking, but these are some reasons that some people hung on. Um, there's another one 
that was kind of interesting. And this is a woman who said the dress cost a lot of money. And if I ever had a special occasion, I would have a dress to wear to that occasion. So they're actually hoping that they can wear that dress again. Um, okay. And that's awesome. I know people that have had tuxes in their closet for years and every once in a while, maybe once a year, there's a fundraiser or something that they do go to. And so they pull out the tux from the closet. Awesome. Great. If you need the dress, save it. But do you need a whole closet full of those? If you're going to a once a year annual banquet, do you need lots of versions of clothes or can you just save the one dress or the one tux or the one, whatever it is, instead of having lots of versions of those, if you're never wearing them. And I'm talking about people that have a closet full of stuff that they haven't worn in 10, 12, 15 years, right? So why do people hang on to stuff that they never use? It's a very interesting question and it's an interesting study. All right. Why do people not pitch empty shampoo containers? And this is a really interesting one. If you've uh, ever cleaned people's homes, and I've been cleaning people's homes for 25 years active in the field and training house cleaners for the last 30 years. We ask people a lot, half of these are empty and these are in your shower. Is there a good reason why? I'm sure that you're not hanging on to them for no good reason. And the answers we got are always perplexing and always unique, but people are afraid that they're going to run out. Now, I'm from a large family. I totally understand that. I've been in the shower when the shower gets, the, the shampoo gets a little bit low and you think, oh no, there are probably five more people that are taking a shower after me. I should save some for the other people that are coming. And so you kind of skimp on the supplies because you know there's not enough. But if you have enough and your whole shower is full of shampoo bottles, can you consolidate? Can you get rid of some? Can you get rid of the old ones? Here's what happens inside the showers. And I've seen this on a lot of people's showers. There gets to be like mold and stuff on the top of the shampoo containers because it's just the soap that's sitting on the top of the containers. And then the containers kind of like are icky and people don't want to take an icky container and then put shampoo on their head, right? The shampoo is supposed to clean the head. You don't take it out of an icky container. <laughs> Why do people do this? Um, Somebody said, I keep half empty sh shampoo because I'm afraid that when I need it, I'm going to be half naked and I'm going to run out. And then what? Right? So they always keep spares and backups just in case. My question is this. If we stopped right now, and you guys can do this in the comments because this would be fun and interesting in the comments. And I have to say, hi, AJ Vintage. Good to see you here. I'm so glad that you're here. What, what happens if you right now go to your shower and there's empty shampoo containers in your in your shower. Is that possible? So after this conversation, what's going to happen to them? Why are you keeping them? What's your reason? T type your reasons here in the comments. I want to know what are your reasons for keeping some of this stuff? Um, somebody here said, I keep half empty shampoo bottles because I didn't like the first half. So I bought more and then I never got around to getting rid of the old stuff. Is that you? We've all tried stuff and you're like, eh, I don't think that's really for me. I've tried shampoo and it wasn't like silk, silky and shiny on my hair. It was more like it was like rough and kind of like a hand soap. And then you're like, ah, it didn't feel so good on my hair. And then I don't know what it's going to get better over time. It doesn't. It doesn't get any better over time. Every time you use the shampoo and I have kept shampoo inside my shower. I'm guilty. Hi, I'm guilty. <laughs> Every time I use it, I'm like, ah, that's not such great shampoo. And yet I keep it. Why do I keep it? It's not getting any better sitting in the container. If I didn't like it the first time, I should get rid of it right away instead of it just stacking up, right? That's the reason why. I keep hoping it's going to get better. Well, it must have gotten better. I hung on to it for a long time. Looking at it now, well, no, it didn't. It stayed the same. How about that? Uh, Melanie says, I keep purple shampoo. Uh, clarifying shampoo and also a couple of conditioners that are open and working. So I never really run out. If you're using them, that's the key. If you're using them and you never run out, that is awesome. If you're using them, if you're not using them and you're sort of done with them, that's the question. Why? Um, I don't even know how to say this. Kafergi 65. I'll give that a try. I don't have that issue. I live alone, but I'm guilty of squeezing the very death out of the toothpaste tube before opening a new one. And I love that. That's, that's the being frugal and not wasting it and wanting to get the last of your money. And so if you're getting the last drop out of it, that's awesome. But what we're talking about here is 
half used stuff and afraid to get to the end and afraid to squeeze out the last drop because of why. Why? Why is that? And it's really an interesting philosophy because when we stop to look at it, um, it's different for everyone. What works for one person is not what works for another. Somebody here says that they are either roommates or they have a house full of people and there are other people getting in the shower and everyone has a different type of shower, uh, shampoo, and then they leave them inside the shower. Could that be in your house? Now, one of the things that we see in Airbnbs a lot when we clean is they have a shampoo that is available. And it's like one of those refillable shampoos where you pour it in at the top and it comes out a dispenser at the bottom. There are no brand names. And whatever the shampoo is there, that's what's there. And that might be a solution in some households where the shampoo bottles are spilling all over the shower. We've cleaned showers where there are dozens of shampoo bottles on the floor of the shower, so much so that you have to kind of like dodge around them when you take the shower. I know it's true when we clean them. But then as the soap scum comes down and you rinse soap off your body and, you know, body oils and uh, suntan oil and all that stuff, that gets on the top of all the bottles. And so we have to manually scrub each of those and clean those off if we're going to leave them in the shower. And lots of them are just flat out empty. So again, a question to consider. And why? Why are we hanging on to these, right? All right. Why people can't toss movies they love. And we're not just talking about movies. We're talking about DVDs. We're talking about CDs. We're talking about entertainment that once at one time was valuable. And that was the... I don't know, the way we watched movies, right? There was a time that we sat down and we had dinner and a movie with our family and we pull out the DVD and like, hey, we got the new DVD of the week. And then there was a time when Blockbuster was open. And as a family, we would go down there, we would pick out a movie and the, it was like a family affair. The whole family would go up and down the aisles. And are we in the mood for drama or comedy? And it was, we were going to buy or rent one movie. We didn't have 100,000 choices available at our fingertips for live streaming. We had to be very selective. And then when we got home, if it wasn't a bad movie, we didn't bounce. We watched the whole movie because we paid for it, right? So why are people now hanging on to DVDs and, and music when we live in an era of 100,000 channels at, at your fingertips, right? What is the reasoning for that? Somebody said, I keep DVDs because I can watch the shows I love at any time without streaming. And it's true. There are people who don't have streaming because... They are, um, they've cut out the, the internet access or whatever, and they only still watch the DVDs. So is that you? And if that's you, do you still have a whole collection of DVDs or do you just have the favorite ones that you're still watching? I know that um, I've got a little sister who is Down syndrome and my mother has narrowed the shows she's allowed to watch because she has this memorization thing where she memorizes and then repeats back everything that's on the movie. <laughs> And my mother will have to screen a movie first. And then she's like, oh, that one has bad words. We can't let her watch that one. And so she's screened and narrowed down the movies that my sister is allowed to watch so that my sister doesn't go around cussing people out for no good reasons, right? Or saying inappropriate things. And so this is the reason my mother hangs on to them is because on this little bookshelf, and there are probably 12 or 15 of these movies, but they're good, like Hallmark movies or fun movies that you know are, are okay for a family to watch. But that's the reason why. So there might be very, very good reasons that you're hanging on to a DVD or a series of movies. Um, I know that when we kind of narrow down some of our collections, and it's really hard to help other people narrow their collections down when you don't go home and you're like, wait a second, I have some extra DVDs that I haven't gotten rid of either. And we had a great big Star Wars collection. And I asked my husband, I said, Tell me about the Star Wars collection. He's like, oh, it cost a lot of money when it came out. And he said, I, I, I'm going to sit down and watch it one day. I said, are you really? Are you going to sit down and watch this DVD set? Or are you going to try to stream it when it's in now like 4K? And he goes, oh. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, I'd probably watch the 4K version. And I said, so is it okay if we get rid of this, this pack? He goes, man, that's a collector's pack. Okay, who's collecting it? And he said, uh, me, <laughs> are you going to buy it from yourself? Like, is it worth any money? And he said, I don't know. So he goes online and it's not worth anything. Like they mass produce them. It's not worth anything. It's just an old used DVD collection or an, an old new DVD collection because he never actually opened them yet. Okay. So for however long you've had these, you never opened them. Is it time to let go of them? Right? Great questions. I love this. If you guys have questions and you want to jump up on camera with me, 
We can have a conversation. I would love to hear your reasons. Um, we have a couple that have come in here. This is awesome. Uh, Winmar FBD says, I lived in a rural area and I have to pay for internet by the gig. So I still have DVDs. Okay. That is a very good reason to hang on to your DVDs because if you have to pay by the gig, every movie is going to be a couple gigs. And so then you're rebuying the movie that you already bought. So this might actually be a good situation where you jump in and you buy the discount movies so you can watch them. And then once you've seen the movie, ask this question. Am I the kind of person that rewatches a movie once I've seen it? I'm not that kind of person. If I've seen a movie, I've seen it. And I want to watch something new that I haven't seen. And so if you've seen the movie, this might be a great chance, like at a public library where they still have DVDs, check the movies out, watch the movies. You didn't pay any money for them. You watch them and then you return them and you got new movies. And that way you're not in a constant state of stacking and storing all these old movies that you may never use again. Now, I do know that we have some resources and there are a variety of different things that we're talking about today. But one of the things that I'm, I'm excited about is that Rita, who works on my team, has put together a bunch of resources for us so that we can figure out ways. Do, do people buy used DVDs? Do people let you donate used DVDs? Do people um, share them or are there like book, book share or video share programs where I can get rid of them and I'm not storing them all myself. So I will leave links after this video is over. I will leave links in the comments below in the description so that you guys can check out all the different places to donate your stuff if that time comes. Because this is this is a time where we're actually looking at our stuff. You don't have to get rid of anything. You can sit here today and join us and have lots of fun and yay, I'm so glad you're here. You don't have to get rid of anything. But I want us to start having the conversations. Wait a second. That sounds like my mother. That sounds like my sister. That sounds like my best friend. That sounds like somebody I know. And Maybe I, we should have the conversation with them. Hey, what's going on here? Do you watch movies twice? You know, I'll take some of those off your hand. I'll give you some of mine. We'll swap. That kind of a thing, right? Nancy says, I kept my CDs and DVDs, but I got rid of the packaging. I put the disc in Tyvek sleeves from the office supply store, which saves a ton of space. Um, I have my little yellow bell with me. This is my little happy bell. And that, uh, that deserves a little ring-a-ding because that was a great idea. Thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing that with us. Because yes, if you can save space and you don't need the fancy packaging, do not hang on to it. Those things take up a lot of space and then you have to dust them, right? They collect dust on the tops and on the sides. And if they're in a book, you just dust the book and then you open up and you can flip through and you can watch all the DVDs that you love. So thank you, Nancy, for that. That was fantastic. Um, AJ says, I only buy DVDs of shows and movies I can't get on streaming sources and which I, I will watch over and over again. Okay. That's also a really great reason why. If it's a hard to find title or if it's gone out of print or maybe it was an independent filmmaker that created that video and there's only one copy or you have a copy from 40 years ago that is no longer in print or it's no longer available. That's a perfect reason you would want to hang on to a video. So great, great suggestions there. Um, AJ, I'm giving you a ring-a-ding as well. That was awesome. All right, moving on. Is this, is this interesting or what? I just, I just love this. This is uh, informative and it's interesting, but reading the questions that have come in have made me stop and think about my own life. And I'm like, Ooh, this one caught me. Why don't people sell dishes they never use? I got a whole bunch of dishes. Oh, I mean, a whole bunch. I got a whole bunch of dishes, like sets. I got five sets of dishes and I have a set of China that I got when I got married. Okay. That was like 20 years ago. And I haven't used them in maybe eight or 10 years. So as we're going through this series, I said to myself, you know what? It's time for me to get rid of the China. I'm going to, I'm going to sell the China. But what's interesting about the China is my family called and they said, Hey, we're, we're doing your house this year for Thanksgiving. And I said, well, wait a second, let's go back to the use it or lose it. Right. Maybe I should use it one more time. So I pulled out all the china and I cleaned it all up and my family came and we had all the china on these really nice chargers. We had this beautiful table. I think in one of my videos, I shared a story with you about how my sister for our wedding, she crocheted me this beautiful tablecloth and I never used it because it never fit any of my tables. And it was lovely. It was hand crocheted. It was like white lace. It was just beautiful. And I've hung on to it for 20 some years. It was a wedding present. 
And then my family came for Thanksgiving this year, and the sister that crocheted that tablecloth was coming for Thanksgiving. We had two great big eight-foot tables, and we put them together because we had so many people coming. And I put a tablecloth on the table, and guess what? Check it out. Use it or lose it. I took that tablecloth, and I put it on top of the runner that was underneath it that was like this gold runner and this immaculately beautiful hand crocheted tablecloth. Then I put the chargers on top of it. It was just gorgeous. And I used all of the china I was going to give away the week before. I used it before I lose it. And then I said, that was awesome. Okay, now I can go out in a blaze of glory, but I'm not probably going to keep them. And here's the reason why. My family rotates and they go to somebody different house every year for Thanksgiving. This year happened to be my house. Okay. There are 19 kids in my family. They are not coming around again for 19 more years. And I'm not going to hang on to the China for another 19 years. It's not going to happen. Right. So there are times and there are reasons why. If you have a good reason, go for it. And if you don't have a good reason, ask yourself why you're still hanging on to it. Right. All right. The dishes are still good. And maybe one day I will use them. That was me. That was me. The dishes are still good. Maybe one day I'll use them, but I didn't. Like I said, I have five sets of dishes and what, some are plastic. They're like picnic dishes. So if I ever go on a picnic, oh, we have uh, lots of picnics out on the back deck where there's cement and the deck below. And if somebody drops the dishes, all of our other dishes are going to break because we eat off glass dishes every day. So our regular dishes are glass. And then I've got this really nice set of Corningware that my husband had when he got when when he moved out on his own. And I had a really nice set of dishes from when I lived on my own. And we got married and then we bought dishes together. So we've got lots of dishes. We don't need them all though. And so my goal is, can we get rid of some? Uh, somebody here said, I'm hoping friends and family will drop by and share a meal with me. This goes back to Kathy. I'm going to call this, this conversation Kathy, because here's the thing. If we're waiting for friends and family to come to us, but we didn't extend an invitation for dinner, nobody's going to show up for dinner and invite themselves to dinner at our house to use our dishes we haven't used, right? So we get to be the ones that say, hey, I got dishes in my cabinet with your name on them, and I've been waiting for 10 years to serve you a meal on them, and isn't it time that you came over and shared a meal with me? We can ask, and they can say, no, I don't want to do that. Great. You're the first right of refusal on my list. I've got 27 people I'm going to call. I'm going to the next person. Your invitation just expired. Thank you very much. And then go to number two. Don't take it personally. People's lives get complicated. People have stuff going on. If that's not the person that you're saving the dishes for, go to the next person on your list and invite them over to dinner. It doesn't have to be a fancy dinner. You can heat something up out of the freezer and put it on a fancy dish. I don't care. That's what I do. But I'll tell you what, it's really nice when you have people that can come over and can share a meal with you. So whether it's just a neighbor, whether it's a friend, whether it's a relative that you haven't talked to in a while, do not wait for the Cathy's of the world to call you, okay? It might be too late. All right. Uh, somebody here said that they would like to donate their set of dishes and just narrow it down to one place setting, but then the person that they gave it to would only have a partial set. What's up with that? Is it not possible that there is another person somewhere who only needs one set of dishes? What if you put an ad on Nextdoor and it's free on Nextdoor? Put an ad and you say, um, I have a place setting for eight and I only need one place setting. Would someone like to put together a dinner club where we use all eight of my dishes and I'll donate the entire set? Or are there seven single people that would each like to come get a place setting? What that tells you is this, if there are single people that show up for your one place setting, they probably need a friend as well. Bring them over and invite them over to dinner, right? So there are ways we can do this, or you can just give a partial set away. No harm in that, right? Uh, somebody said, I hang on to the dishes because the cupboards are bare without them. Huh, isn't that a lovely, a lovely moment? And that's not a common one we get, but... Yeah, I can see that. You would like to have something inside your cupboard, and this represents a fun moment in time. So, yeah. All right. Here's a fun one. Why people don't toss clothes hangers they've emptied. This is a really tough one, and it's a, uh, one that's near and dear to my heart because we help a lot of people clean out their closets. One of the um, um, issues that we have 
is as some people are getting rid of their clothing, we like to toss the coat hangers. We like to donate them. But before we do, we always put them in a, a back closet at the back of the house and we leave them for 30 days. And it's because at the end of the 30 days, if they haven't put anything back on the hangers, then they're probably not going to. But if at the end of the 30 days, they said, wait a second, I bought two items that I, I need two hangers for, they still have some. If they're out of the closet and they're out of sight, they're out of mind. And there's a tendency not to refill the closets with clothes once you've removed the hangers. Now, we've asked people, why do you still have the hangers now? It's been five years since you emptied all the clothes. One lady said, I keep empty coat hangers in case I buy more clothes in the future. Like maybe she's going to go back to work. Maybe she's going to need a set of business clothes. Maybe she wants to make sure that she has enough hangers because these are not cheap hangers. These aren't the cheap wire ones. These actually have felt on them and they keep the clothes from slipping off the hanger if you have like a, an evening gown or a dress or like a strapless, not a strapless, that's not going to stay on either, like a strap, a strap dress or a strap tank top or a t-shirt or something. It will hang on the hangers without slipping off. Um, someone said they're very expensive and they're, or, or they're made of wood. And so I just don't want to get rid of them because I paid a lot of money for them. And so this is another one of those times where there's value perceived for hanging on to it. And then if you're not using it, what, how, mu how much you paid becomes irrelevant if they're just sitting there and you're not using them. And so then the next question is, if they were expensive and you're not going to use them and it's been five years and you never filled your closet back up again, is there someone you know that you could donate them to or could you, could you package them up and give them as a gift or you know, let someone else take them? Is, is there a possibility? So we like to ask the question because one woman said, I like to hang on to the hangers because it reminds me of how many clothes I've gotten rid of from my closet. And when I open this up, this is like my trophy. This is my sign of success. Like, ta-da, I got rid of all of these clothes and my closet is this much, has le this much less clothing in it. And so that was her way of saying, my closet is not full of clothes. I just kept the hangers. So there are reasons why, and that was meaningful to her. Okay, then we don't we don't want to give those away. That's her trophy. If this means that this is the trophy and the closet is not getting refilled, let's keep this. We'd rather have the empty closet with just the hangers than have clothes everywhere that need to be sorted through again, right? Um, and so this is fun. Uh, Winmar FBD says that's true. The curbside giveaway works here too. We've used the curbside giveaway on so many occasions. And the secret to the curbside giveaway is we usually put it in a box. We take it out to the mailbox and we take a picture from the road with the mailbox in the front of the house with the box at the end of the driveway. Here's the reason why. When we put an ad on Nextdoor or the uh, Buy Nothing Marketplace, what happens is as people drive by, they can see the number of the house. They can see the box. Oh, yes, this is what it looked like in the picture. Oh, yes, that's the right house. And they know they're at the right place to pick up the stuff. Um, they don't want to go randomly picking up stuff from other people's houses or their gifts from, you know, shopping that UPS just delivered. <laughs> but if, if, it's, if it matches the picture, they're like, yeah, 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 I'm at the right house. But the longest we have ever waited for something to get picked up once we put it out on the on the next door is 26 minutes. That is the longest. And it was a, it was a dishwasher. We had a dishwasher, a portable dishwasher that we gave away. And so that was kind of hard because how many people needed it? But within 26 minutes, it was gone like that. What are the odds, right? Ha, ah, fun stuff. And AJ says, thank you, Angela. I didn't know about the pickup, please. Yes, there are so many, there are so many different places that will come pick up for you that you don't even have to leave your house. And that's the reason we're putting these resources together. So if you have resources or if you know of something, uh, somebody just mentioned um, a new one for us and I forget the name of it, but we made a list of it and we're like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a chain now that's like finding its way across the United States. That's a resource we need to add to our pickup list. These are people that come out and they pick up donations that can be reused or recycled or something like that. So that's always a good one. Uh, musical instruments is another one. This is um, a hard one because lots of people equate a happy time of their life with the music that they've played. And so this is either like from school bands or this is um, 
I don't know, people had hobbies, people were musicians. And so people have their musical instruments and why do they still have them years beyond? So as we've helped people declutter and clean out their homes, I always ask, you know, hey, you've got like five musical instruments here. There must be a story. And there are stories. They share the stories with us. And it's really interesting because sometimes they're not what you would expect. Um, somebody said, I keep my kids' school instruments because maybe one day they're going to want them for their kids. Okay, did you ask them? Did you ask them if they want them for their kids? Because their kids are kind of like already in high school right now. Are the kids interested in music? Are they only doing sports? Are they going to come get the instruments? Like, when are you going to ask them? Because those years are slipping away. And so if they were supposed to use them in high school, let's hurry and ask them right now. Can we call them while, while I'm here? And a lot of people are hanging on. They don't even know why. Oh, I didn't know that those were in that closet. They've been there for 20 years. Didn't know they were still there, right? Um, there are opportunities for, I don't know, people to play again. But as life gets busy, I know that for my husband, my husband saved his saxophone from high school. And he still has it. And so as we were going through the instruments, I laid them all out. And I said, if you could only keep one, which one would you keep? And he said, that one. And he picked a musical instrument. It was a saxophone. I would pick that one. Of all the other instruments, I said, why would you pick that one? He said, it's my favorite. And I said, okay. Is it, the, is it cool then if I get rid of the other ones? He said, yeah, I'm probably never going to use them again. Interesting. Why are they still here? He said, I never got around to giving them away. There was no reason. He wasn't hanging on to them. He was never going to play them again. But when asked which one would you keep, he knew immediately which one he'd keep. That's great news. What that means is I can get rid of four of them. He keeps the one, I get rid of four, right? And so then the next question was, where can we donate these? Are the public school systems, are they accepting used um, saxophones? And then my question was, are, are they worth anything? And lots of people are keeping them because they have a perceived value of how much they're worth. And so we did, we jumped online and we said, does anybody buy these? Is anybody accepting them? Like, where do you go if you have used saxophones and used bass guitars and stuff like that, that you want to give away? Where do you go? Who's taking them? And so one of the resources that Rita has put together for us is a place that will take your musical instruments if you are in fact donating them. Because if there is some value in them and you're not planning to sell them or you don't have a box to put them in or you don't want to pay for shipping or all the hassle of that, who will take those? right? Um, so those, those are good conversations to have, and you can have them starting in your own home and then starting with your own family. We talked to a lady and it was really sad. She was a, a musician. She played in a band and she said, uh, one day I'm going to, I'm going to play again. And it was kind of sad because that's what she was telling herself, but she had arthritis in her fingers so bad. She couldn't write her own name, let alone play and strum a guitar right? And so the days are going to come when the hobbies we used to have are not working for us anymore. And so while hanging on to them brought back the days of her time in the band and a time when she felt important and needed and valued and she was somebody, is there something we can do today that works with the skills and the mobility she has today that will give her the same sense of purpose that will let her let go of this particular thing in her life that now only causes sadness when she looks at it. And she keeps telling herself, maybe one day, maybe one day, she can't even lift her arm up anymore to put her arm in the position to play a guitar, right? She's had the shoulder surgery and all that stuff. So as, as people get on in years, what can they do? What can we help them do that is a, a hobby or something that they love that makes them somebody again, right? And if you have a family member that is hanging on to musical instruments and they're never going to play again, can you help them get into something else? Can you help them find a new hobby? Can you help them let go of the musical instruments in a way that honors somebody who wants to play music? Is there somebody that could come over and play music for them with their musical equipment? Are there, are there ways that we could work that out? But they're conversations I would love for us to have. And so I'm really glad. It's kind of sad, but I'm really glad we're having the conversation because it gives us a chance to take a look at the reasons why we're hanging on to stuff when maybe in the back of our mind, we know we're never going to use it again. You know, interesting stuff. All righty. The next one I have is 
dress clothes. Now, it's interesting because there are people that hang on to lots of dress clothes. I know during the pandemic, we ran into a lot of people who switched jobs. So they had a whole bunch of business clothes that not only were they not wearing now, they're probably never going to wear again because they switched to careers. They got a whole closet full of clothes. Now, what are we going to do with the clothes? And it's a fair question because a lot of dress clothes are not cheap. There are dresses that are, you know, 60, 80, a hundred dollars and you buy a hundred dollar pair of shoes and you don't want to just toss it. You don't want to give it away. And so we asked people, well, why, why are you still hanging on to it? There was a woman who was disabled and she said, well, as soon as I'm better, I've got to go back to work. And so I'm going to wear the clothes again. That's a valid reason for hanging on to a closet full of really expensive, nice dress clothes. Uh, somebody said, I can't donate dress clothes because with this economy, I may need, I may need to go find another job. So this is somebody who didn't have a job, didn't have it on their horizon to go wear the clothes again. They're not going to wear them anytime soon, but with the knowing I might need to, right? I might need to go back into the workforce. There are places, and this is kind of cool. There are places I know in my hometown that do like a women's dress day. And what this is, is all of the women that are going back to work and there's like a, a job fair where people go and they're trying to find a job and whatever. And then there's also a section where they have a whole bunch of dress clothes that have been dry cleaned and the dry cleaners are in on it. Like they provide the dry cleaning for free. They've touched up all these clothes. They have them all special in, in sizes or whatever. And as people come through, they get to take those clothes home with them free of charge. So this is a person that doesn't have to go out and buy a nice wardrobe in the event that they're just getting a new job, they're getting back on their feet. And so my encouragement to you is, have you ever considered donating some of your really expensive, nice stuff to a place like that, where this is a chance to help somebody start over again? And I know we all know people in our lives that at one time or another have maybe hit a bump in life and they are kind of between place A and place B and where they really want to be is place B, but they're too proud to ask for help and they're too proud to to say, you know, I don't have the resources to buy nice clothes and I don't really know where to go to get the nice clothes and I'm expected to wear nice clothes at my job. Is, is there a way that we gracefully could help those people out? I know that uh, there was a, a business that I worked for at one point during my life. And during the time they had a, an ongoing program where people could bring in any of their clothing that no longer fit them or any of their supplies that they used at work and they would recycle them within the company. And it was a huge company. There were three or 400 people. But what happened is people were always bringing in things and it was kind of like a lost or found, but it was just a room where people would bring in things and there, there was like clothing racks and they would hang up these dresses and they'd all been dry cleaned and they were all nice. People would bring in like notebooks and stacks of paper, pens, um, staplers, all kinds of weird odds and ends, but they were all things that people would use for the job. And so anybody that came in that got a job, they were like, oh, hey, by the way, there's this room. You can either take something or leave something, but it's within the company. But the rule is this. If you see somebody wearing the clothes that you brought in, you don't say, oh, hey, you know, it looked better on me than it did on you. Or I'm so glad that you could use that because you couldn't afford it or something like that. that you, you can't ever bring up that it used to be yours, right? No shaming somebody for needing that item. And so it was kind of like a secret Santa, if you will. There were people that brought in some really nice stuff. And then like two weeks later, you'd see somebody walking down the hall with a handbag or whatever. And you're like, oh, that's so cool. You know what I mean? Like take something, leave something, share it, you know, help everybody out on the same, on the same kind of moment of let's all help each other get better. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but there are, there are reasons people are hanging on to this and some of them are not for the reasons you would think at all. In this particular scenario, uh, one woman was hanging on to a whole bunch of makeup because she was once an Avon lady. And every time she, um, reached a certain level or a certain plateau of, I guess they're called campaigns. And every time she reached a campaign, then she would get like so much product for free. And so she had all this free product that then she would re-gift for the holidays. And so now it's been, I don't know, a two dozen years since she's been the Avon lady and she's still giving away this old lipsticks and old makeup and stuff like that. And there is a shelf life on that stuff. And so the time comes 
maybe once you are an Avon lady and maybe it's time to, to just be done with the whole Avon thing if you're not selling them anymore. And if the makeup is not still good, maybe it's still good. Maybe it's not. I know she's still giving away a lot of the jewelry. And so she has a lot of that kind of stuff, but, um, old makeup sometimes is dried out and it just doesn't perform as well as it once did. So there's, there's that to be aware of as well. There's another woman that was, uh, her aunt was a Mary Kay distributor. And so along the very same line, it was her way of showing affection. And so that was kind of cool. She got her kudos from her aunt by receiving the Mary Kay samples. And so I guess in Mary Kay, they, they did the makeup and the facials for you. And so they would be like these home parties or the distributors would get together and they would encourage you to do up your face. And so then whatever the unused bottles of stuff were that the people tried, she would pack them up and give them to her niece. And so that was a way of saying, oh, my aunt made me feel so important by giving me these things. And so it had nothing to do with the makeup at all. She wasn't going to wear them. It was just her aunt's way of saying thank you. And so she hung on to them for lots of years. If that's the case, and that's fine, could we just scale it down so you don't have hundreds of these bottles and you just only have like a small collection that still represents the love your aunt had for you instead of trying to save them all, representing all the love she had for you, just representing some of it, right? Again, makeup does have a shelf life and we want to make sure that we're honoring that. Um, and Melanie says, uh, similar to this point, I've taken scrubs that have outgrown and I've left them in the nurse's lounge and they just magically disappear with a sign of free on them. Oh, and this goes back to the clothing. I love that because there are, again, nurses that could use that and nurses that will need that. And all they, all they will wash them in is just a hot sanitizing cycle and they're good to go again. So if it's the right size, heck yeah. Thank you, Melanie, for sharing that. You, you get a ring of my bell. There you go. <laughs> I'm having so much fun with my bell. This is just awesome. And Nancy says, my local community college has a shop where they offer gently used business attire for students to wear for interviews. You know what, Nancy? Here's another bell for you. That's fantastic. Yes, I love that. And along with the makeup, if you have makeup that's still good, that hasn't expired, that's not used, that for some reason it's a gift or something, what Nancy is saying right now where the local community college is helping people get back on their feet, this is a great chance to bring in a little basket of goods. And this could be soaps, it could be makeup, it could be lotions, hand lotions, it could be things that someone might use if they're just getting started and they're trying to, you know, keep their hygiene up and they're trying to, you know, I, I, I'm just really trying to start over again. This is a really great way of just saying, hey, we had extras. If you can use them, great. We've noticed over, over the years, we've worked with a lot of school teachers. And one of the things we've noticed is a lot of school teachers get a lot of gifts from kids. And so they have lots of things like coffee mugs and, you know, trinkets and knickknacks and things like that, that they, they don't have room for at their homes. And so lots of the school teachers would come to us as the house cleaners. And they're like, do you know anyone that can use this? And so we would put together donation boxes and we'd say, yes, we'll take those off your hands. And so then we would donate those, these to other situations or charities or, you know, homeless shelters or churches or things like that, where people can use them. And it's not going to get back to the kid that their parent bought it or whatever. And then the teacher was ungrateful or whatever. So there are ways you can be grateful without, you know, but with the makeup, yeah, it's a, it, it's kind of a tough subject. One woman said that dressing up makes her feel pretty and she wants to get back to that time of her life when she feels pretty again. And so the question is, are you waiting for a special occasion to dress up? And I, I want to stop here for a second because all too often we get busy in life and it's it's go, 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 go. And we we don't take the time to feel beautiful like we once did. And I want us to stop and be the best version of ourselves. What does that look like? Does that mean that you are going to take time and you are going to dress up and you are going to get in the nice clothes and, and what you're going to go out and you're going to meet with Kathy and you're going to have a great meal, right? We deserve, we deserve that. We deserve to have friends. We deserve to have connections and personal connections with other friends, right? It's easy to isolate ourselves and just get buried in work and TV and kids. And it's just a vicious cycle. And there's no, there's no me time. If you've got makeup, that you haven't used. Somebody here said they have a lot of lipsticks that they haven't worn. Don't know why they wear them. If you have them and they're still good, use it or lose it, right? There's nothing to say. You can't go in and just put on some bright red lipstick today and just wear it, wear it proud. 
You know what I mean? You've got it. You probably look fantastic in it. It's it's free because you already have it. Go in there and put some lipstick on and, you know, just walk around the house. See if anybody notices. And if nothing else, every time you walk into the mirror and you see it, you go, look at me. I'm beautiful today, right? You deserve that. You deserve that every time you look in the mirror, you see a happy face looking back at you like, oh yeah, I got the lipstick on today. I'm, I'm wearing it with pride, right? So you don't have to get rid of stuff. It's just, why do you have the stuff you have? And if you have good reasons, awesome, keep it. If you have it and you want to use it, but you're saving it for a special occasion, do me a favor, put this on your calendar. Like we're going to meet again next Thursday, same time, same place. But between now and next Thursday, will you promise me that you will make a special occasion for yourself where you will get dressed and you will put on the makeup and you will, you will do your hair and you will put on the fancy clothes that are waiting for some rainy day. That rainy day may never come. The rainy day may never come. You deserve to do it. Even, even if you live alone, dress up, put on the fancy clothes, make yourself a lovely dinner and use that one place setting that you've been storing in the, the cabinet that you've never used for what, 10 or 12 years. Don't leave the fancy dishes for a special occasion. You eat dinner off of those tonight. If you're just having a TV dinner and you're sitting in front of your TV and it might just be microwave food, put it on a fancy plate and sit there and by golly, enjoy the heck out of it because you deserve it, right? I want you to sit there and say, wait a second, this is my life. I'm going to enjoy every last drop of it. I'm going to use the last bit of everything I have. Uh, the, the lady that used the last of the toothpaste, God bless you. You made it count. You used the very, very last of it to the last of the resources. You get a bell for that. You know what I mean? That's just awesome. But that's somebody seizing the day. That's grasping the moment, right? That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not saying get rid of everything. I'm saying get rid of everything you're not using and keep the stuff that has meaning. And if stuff doesn't have meaning, give it meaning. Make it count in your life, right? That's what this is all about. All right. Why people won't let go of old digital cameras? This is a great question because the digital cameras are still good, right? They're still absolutely good. They still take pictures. But how are you taking pictures right now? I want you guys to stop and think about the last 30 pictures that you took. Did you take them with a digital camera? The answer is probably no. I took them with my smartphone. We now have smartphones that are so much more convenient. And yet we're hanging on to those digital cameras and the little batteries and the battery packs and the little pouch that they go in. Why? Why are we hanging on to it? Because they're now obsolete. I remember my husband asked me the other day, he says, uh, you should use a GoPro. And I said, GoPro? I forgot about the GoPros. I haven't used GoPros in a couple of years. You know why? It's because the, the viewfinder is only this big. It's only this big. And I can't really see very well. My smartphone has a, a viewfinder that's, I don't know how big it is. It's this big, right? I can see a whole lot better with something that's that much bigger. So if I'm going to take a picture, why would I use something that's this big that doesn't have any instant replay? It doesn't let me know if the pictures turned out or if they were even centered very well. With my smartphone, I get instant replay. I can play it back again and go, oh, ooh, do a retake, do a retake. And I can do the retake right then in real time right? Why are we hanging on to digital assets? And I say assets, they could be microphones, they could be cameras, they could be zip drives, they could be hard drives, they could be things that we're just no longer using again. I know that Rita has put together a resource for us as well on this. Digital cameras, places that are taking them, places that are buying them, places that are donating them, like to, to photography schools and kids that are just getting started. Maybe their parents haven't allowed them yet to have a phone, but they're allowed to have a digital camera and they're allowed to take pictures for this class. So there are things like that that are available. And I want us to start thinking in terms of, am I ever really going to use it again? Because I hung on to the GoPro and I still, sadly, I'm embarrassed to say I still own the GoPro. But why? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because it's waterproof and I've got a waterproof case and it goes to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> How often am I at the bottom of the ocean? Right? And I asked my husband this the other day. When am I going to go to the ocean again, go to the bottom of the ocean and take pictures with my GoPro camera? Because by the time that happens, there will be like an underwater smartphone case that I can use my smartphone and then see in real time what hap what, what's happening. 
<laughs> right? What are the reasons why? I don't even live near the ocean, so it's not going to happen anytime soon. What are you hanging on to? All right. We've got um, another another one. And this, are, th this or these are kids' clothes. Why are we hanging on to kids' clothes? I know why I would hang on to them. It's because they're super cute. Oh, that's so cute. And I don't know why they do this. They trick us. You go through the store and you see a little tiny pair of cowboy boots. And you're like, those are so cute. And you buy them. And you don't even have a kid. You're like, why did I just do that? Right? Because they're cute. What are you going to do with them? Lots of people hang on to kids' clothes because there was a time when the kids wore them. And that reminds us sentimentally of the time we spent with the kids. It's like hanging on to them for a little bit longer if I hang on to the clothes, right? Well, are the kids still alive? If the kids are still alive and they're still around, how about let's not be Kathy or wait for Kathy? How about we get on the phone, forget about the small clothes that are cute, that are growing old in the closet, and we're hoping one day, what, we're going to remember the joy of the, ba the, the babies or the infants when we could actually go out and enjoy the adult versions of those same children? Let's go out and enjoy the adult versions right? Let's, let's make time. Now, nobody has time. You're going to call the kids and they're going to be caught up in their lives. They're going to be busy with their jobs. They're going to be busy with their families. They're going to be busy with a whole bunch of other things and they're not going to have time. And so you have to become a salesperson and you have to get really emphatic about, oh, I've missed you so much. And I'm so eager to see you again. If it's only for a cup of tea, can we have tea and scones? Can we make it a short visit? Cause I would love to see your beautiful face. Oftentimes, People don't take time for us because they don't know how important they are to us. And if they are that important that we're hanging on to 50-year-old clothes that they once wore when they were tiny and small, and those kids are still around, by golly, get on the phone, get on the WhatsApp, however you got to do it, call them up. And if nothing else, if nothing else, do a FaceTime, do a Zoom call, right? Everybody has technology now. There's a way we can make, we can make a conversation happen where you just say, hey, you know what? You grab tea wherever you are. I'll grab tea wherever I am. At four o'clock, we turn on the cameras and we chat just for five minutes and we make it a date and then make an appointment. Now, I hate to say that because who wants to make an appointment with their kid? My mother. My mother has 19 kids and she's savvy enough to call. She makes an appointment. She schedules her appointments and then she says, can this be a standing appointment? And the answer is yes, mom, it can. So I meet with my mom every single Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is her time with me. Now, I'm savvy enough to know this. If she spends one hour a day with all of her kids, I only get a turn every three weeks. So the fact that my mom is willing to meet with me for two or three hours on a Monday afternoon, and she's 2,500 miles away, by golly, I'm going to drop what I'm doing, and I'm going to spend that time with her because I'm not there physically. I do want to check in on her. I do want to hear what she's up to. I want to hear her plans. And so we cook dinner together. Hey, let's cook dinner together. I'm in my kitchen cooking my dinner. She's in her kitchen cooking her dinner 2,500 miles apart. And we got the, the phones and the videos on. We're chitty chatting like old girlfriends. How cool is that? I never had to leave my house. It wasn't like this huge time unraveling because I was going to have to cook dinner anyway, right? And so was she. And so she'll say, hey, let's clean the house together. Okay, great. Let's. I'm going to grab my cleaning supplies. You clean, grab your cleaning supplies, 2,500 miles separate sides of the country. Let's, let's start on the stairs. And then she'll say, oh, I just finished my stairway. I'm like, ah, you're ahead of me. I'm still on mine, right? And we chit chat. We laugh about it. We talk about it as we're cleaning our houses. So we do dusting and we do little pickup jobs around the house, tidying up. We cook meals, but we're spending time with each other. Why? Because technology lets us do that. Don't wait for Kathy, right? I don't know why you're hanging on to stuff. And a lot of times it's important to us. But are we going to wake up one day and say, oh my gosh, I, I'm waiting for Kathy and Kathy's not coming, right? So if I can just enforce one idea, don't let that happen to you, right? Okay. Um, I know that we are approaching our final moments together. We got to wrap this up here very quickly because I want to respect your time. Does anybody have any questions that I did not get to cover? Uh, AJ says, your mom sounds awesome. Um, I love my mom. I, I want to stop and say thank you so much, AJ. I'm going to give you a little bell for that. And then I'm going to give a bell for my mom. My mother is one of the coolest people that I've ever met. And really quick, 
there was a window of my life from about age nine to 22 where she was not my best friend. We did not get along. And I was, I was respectful to her, but we were not best friends. And I just thought like eh, in my head, I was respectful to her, but I wasn't, I wasn't a fan. And at 22 years old, she was savvy enough to fly across the country because I'd already moved away from home. And she sat down at a picnic table with me and she said, um, I don't know what happened between us, but I would love to start over again. Is there any possible way that I can just erase the last however many years and we just start over again like new friends? And I said, well, I don't see a reason why not. So we laid the ground rules and we said, here's how we're going to do that. And so we erased all of the weirdness between us because there was a lot of weirdness. I thought she's like this crazy old woman who has 19 kids, like, who, you know, the old woman in the shoe. <laughs> and I stopped to really get to know her for who she was. Now, when I was a kid, she was pregnant all of those years. So it was like a hormonal imbalance thing and migraine headaches. And she was kind of like snippy and I just, it didn't jive with me. Now she was done having the kids. And I was like, oh my goodness, she's a delightful woman. And to this day, my husband is my best friend in the world. And my mother is my next best friend in the world. And I'm really, really glad that she was willing. I mean, it took a lot of courage on her part to, to come fly across the country and to come say to me, you're being a jerk. And can we start over again? Because it would have been so easy to just say, well, I'm waiting for Angela to give me a call and have me become the Kathy of her life that was never going to call. When I moved away from home, I was never really going to talk to her again. I kind of was like glad I left. And what I would have missed, because for the last 30 years, my mom has been my best friend. And every single Monday, we have a standing appointment that no matter what, we are not going to let anything interrupt us because we are important enough to each other. We will make time, right? So I love the fact that we're going through this series together, and I'm so glad that you guys have joined me today. I'm honored that you're willing to spend an hour of your day with me. It's just, this is, a, I'm going to give you guys a bell. This is like really awesome for me. Thank you so much. And uh, I will be answering your questions in the comments below. So if you watch this replay later and you have questions or whatever, please stay in touch with me because I'm here to help you. All right. If you have questions or comments, we have a support group absolutely free of charge. It's on Facebook. It's called Hoarding World. And there are lots of people that are going through the closets. They're taking pictures of the coat hangers. They're taking pictures of the kids' clothes. They're taking pictures of the dishes that they let go. And they're telling us the reasons either why they're keeping them or why they're letting them go. And so come join us if you need an accountability partner or if you just want to make some friends. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And until we meet again, have a great, great week. And I'll see you same time, same place next Thursday.